Good evening. My name is Evan Plager, and I'm the producer of tonight's program. Logical Fallacies is an improvised debate show based on a premise created by Alexander Nigro and Martin Gonzalez. The participants, moderator included, are allowed no preparation regarding the topic or their positions upon it. To maintain the improvisation of the debaters, we present their theses in one take. Everything you see will be completely unscripted and was performed in front of a live audience. As such, the statements made during the program may contain harsh language and other mature sensibilities. And so, in honor of such great debaters as Truffaut, Lincoln, Parmenides, Shermer, and Peller, I hereby present to you, Logical Fallacies. Good evening and welcome to tonight's debate. My name is Wood C. Huck and I am here uh, with my two guests tonight to discuss um, uh, recent events and how people feel about them. Uh, the events I am referring to is the recent wizard internment camps that have been springing up around the country and whether they are legal and ethical and if they should be uh, still in uh, today. So uh, on my left today we have the uh, representative for the wizard internment camp, uh, Grandmaster Sparkles. And on my right, um, we have the Attorney General of the United States, uh, General uh, R.C., uh, if I'm mispronouncing this, please let me know, uh, Rockenheimer? That's great. It's Rockenheimer. Ro Rockenheimer. Excellent. Heimer. Is it? You put the emphasis on the first syllable. Rockenheimer. On the first? On so, the second part. Oh, Rockenheimer. Okay. Thank uh, you. Excuse me. Okay. So, <clears throat> um... Two very opposing uh, sides here tonight, uh, two very different views. Um, my hope is that we get to the bottom of this and uh, can move on and uh, see where we go. All right, um, opening remarks. We'll start with you, Grandmaster. Yes. Um, I really, when I was asked to appear on tonight's show, I frankly didn't see the point. The idea that we need to be interning these wizards to me seems inherently obvious. I mean, there is no argument I can give that will not sound like stating the obvious. Wizards are dangerous. Wizards are not sharing their research and data with the scientific community. Wizards are oftentimes not even registered citizens. They don't have permanent residences. They commit any number of crimes from uh, technical second-degree bestiality through turning people into frogs after they've had sex with them to, you know, even just flat-out setting people on fire. I mean, what more could you want in a group of people who need to be put away? Absolutely. Very good point. Um, interesting stance you have taken, Grandmaster. Mm -hmm. um, and to you, Rockenheimer, uh, your opening remarks, please. Our country was based on the belief in a militia fighting for what we know. Our Second Amendment is the right to bear arms. And does anyone bear arms more freely than wizards? No, they do not. Some don't even need wands anymore. They've learned to get past it, and they can cast spells freely. That is American. And I don't think I'm in the wrong here when I'm pointing out that my opponent, Grandmaster Sparkles, may even be a wizard himself. He's turned against his own people. I resent that accusation. Calm down, gentlemen, please. Sparkles is my given name. Oh, uh, please, uh, uh, Grandmaster. Grandmaster. Easy, gentlemen, gentlemen, please. We're here for a civilized debate to get to the bottom of why the U.S. government imposed these wizard internment camps. Um, let's go to the first question here. Um, Rockenheimer, you will start this one. Um, of the question is... Um, after the recent photos were released of the wizard internment camps with um, showing uh, wizards having to uh, carry buckets of water without uh, having them sprout legs and also um, not being able to use brooms as transportation, uh, how do you feel this uh, um, impedes on their human and wizard rights? I feel this very much impedes upon their human and their wizard rights, which are the same as human rights because wizards are humans. Now, you see, the problem is these people running these camps, they're not associated with the American government. 
it got outsourced to the wizards themselves. People who classify themselves as grand masters, they feel the need to take and block the powers using magical block and receptor power things that I don't understand. I'm not magical. I'll admit that. I, myself, am not magical. But I do know that I've had wizards under my command in this here military, and I've never had more loyal soldiers who turned our tanks into unicorns, and our unicorns shot rockets. Very powerful imagery there. Um, also, um, uh, a word of thanks to all military servicemen out there, uh, magical or not. Uh, Grandmaster Sparkles, um, your rebuttal. This just, it frankly infuriates me. This is not by any, I, I will admit that yes, we have privatized the wizard internment industry, but this is not the first time the U.S. government has done this. We've done the same things with uh, privatizing our, even our own military, using military contractors. So don't think you're clean of this particular tactic. In addition to that, we have also privatized the prison system, and we're even using private investigators in police matters for things like internal affairs. So saying that the government itself is not running this operation does not inherently mean that you are not a part of it. And furthermore, as to answer your question about the, um, how it is that we are managing to intern the wizards despite their magical abilities, well, I will tell you that is classified information. He won't even talk about it. Uh, again, we're not going to try and pry for uh, compromised information like that. Um, so um, that brings us to our next question for you, too. Um, how do you think that, uh, well, let me rephrase that. What are the similarities and what are the differences between this wizard internment camp and previous internment camps, such as the internment of the Japanese during World War II? If I may begin with that? Absolutely. The Japanese did not choose to be Japanese. They, if anything, tried to renounce their Japanese-ness when they came to America. Wizards require extensive training in caves, dungeons, and all matter of non-public spaces that are not accessible to the American people for oversight by civilians. Wizards chose their life, even more than regular criminals did. And they must be held accountable for it. You see, my opponent claims that there's only one way to hold a wizard accountable for what they do. But wizards, especially with the new addition of wizarding colleges, like the ones up north in the snow, they have towers these days, not just dungeons and caves to study in. They use these towers to learn of beneficial wizarding things. Like making buckets of water walk. Sure, maybe Healing. in the ivory tower, but in the real world, wizards are primarily used for combat ventures, and you know this better than anybody. Oh, I have had plenty of wizards under my command. I will not deny this. Uh, gentlemen, please, let's keep this to a civil debate. I will not deny the wizards that were under my command. I embrace them openly. They were some of my most loyal and patriotic soldiers. They only difference between a wizard and any other citizen is a pointy hat. They're just as patriotic. They love their country just as much as the rest of us. And I tell you firsthand, I went through a lot of schooling to get the rank that I did here. More schooling than any wizard has been through. Are you going to intern me for being good with the skills I learned? Would you like to answer that? Yes. Would you say the same... As the Attorney General, you, you have uh, been a part of many operations to stop, say, terrorist ventures. And that is correct. Like. So if you have found somebody who has gone to training with the Taliban, has learned how to build explosives, improvised explosive devices nonetheless, and has gone behind the back of both the American and their own government, would you not see that reason to apprehend them in some way? There's a difference here, okay? Okay. The Taliban have struck against us as an organized and fully functional group. We are not taking them prisoner and capturing those that we can for their training. Their training has nothing to do with the fact they were terrorists. They attacked us on our land. They invaded us 
and caused numerous casualties. Wizards have not organized a group against us. They have organized with us more often than not. Sure, I will not deny the outliers, the single acting alone, the dark wizards that happen to be out there. We need to capture the dark wizards. They were bad, but I do not want them interned. I want them put in prisons. I know that we have worked on restrictive collars to cut off powers. Can we not put those on just the dark wizards? Why do we have to put them on every <laughs> single wizard we meet? You are so naive in thinking that the dark wizards have not organized. Much like the uh, mole brainwashing techniques that the CIA itself does engage in, wizards have got, taken this to even a further extent, and they have a common practice of wiping the minds of whatever wizards they send out to do their dirty work. If you think that there is not a dark wizard coalition operating in the States, you are lying to yourself. Let's move on to the next question. Um, with these recent internments of the wizards, um, you, uh, you uh, Grandmaster Sparkles, have um, pushed for the uh, inclusion of the new act in the military, the Don't Ask, Don't Spell, where uh, wizards are not allowed to openly be wizards in the military. Um, how do you, uh, why did you push for that? And then also you, General Rockenheimer, how do you feel about these since you have worked so closely with so many wizards in your uh, military career? I think, like I said earlier, Becoming a wizard requires extensive training. And many of these people, I will admit, go into learning about wizardry through a desire to, say, serve their country. But at a certain point, they have to admit that they need to obey the laws of the Geneva Convention, just like the rest of us. So conjuring sarin gas out of thin air violates Geneva Code. And I think a lot of soldiers go into this becoming misguided, and I think as long as they are not out saying that they are wizards, if they can maintain themselves and not use any magic that they may have learned beforehand, I think we can still allow them in our military. I am very much against this initiative, and I pray that it does not go through for the sake of our borders. My own son enlisted in the military recently to follow in my footsteps. And he just got to the first step, the first level of the major's tower that we train our military majors in. He's learned lightning spells. He's learned telekinesis. And I swear, you bring up sarin gas conjuring? We haven't conjured sarin gas since World War I. We have not done it. And I know some people bring out demon summoning. Demon summoning is not something the American government does. Those, those black tower contractors that get hired every once in a while, they have been known pyromancers, demon summoners, and of course gas conjurers, but the American military themselves have only ever used basic kinetic and energy-based spells. So are you suggesting that we should leave these demons interned in the underworld? <clears throat> Why don't we let the demons out? Did they not acquire the same skills of pyromancy and sodomy with pitchforks? Why can we not allow them to bear their arms, you know, and turn them into spiders? Why not? Uh, gentlemen, I'm going to stop you there. Um, again, we are talking about the internment of wizards, not um, into the dark arts and demon summoning. Um, this moves into the final question before uh, we go into questions from the audience. Um, <coughs> In the internment camps, some have uh, compared them to the uh, internment camps used uh, with the Japanese and also uh, with um, the Jews uh, during World War II, uh, many atrocities. Um, what do you think the after effects will be when these wizards are finally re released, if they are ever released? First, I'd like to take this oh, first. Absolutely, sorry. Seeing uh, as he has been monopolized in the first answers. You see, we've seen this before. As you brought up, the internment of the Jews during World War II, it was not just the Jews. They took the gays, they took blacks, they also took wizards. It was less known, because there's, oddly enough, not as many come out of Germany. They were referred to as gypsies, I believe. That is true. And we know what happened to the gypsies when they were taken into the internment camps that the Germans held. They were starved, they were burned, sometimes at stakes, and that is a hate crime if I ever met one. The awful things that will come out of the American wizard internment camps are the lacks of starvation 
They will be skin and bone. They will have forgotten their powers. They may even lose control of their powers. And I don't think I need to tell you about what happens when you have a mind break in the middle of the Thanksgiving Day Parade. Uh, and something none of us want to have happen here. Um, yes, and uh, Grandmaster Sparkles. I just want to be very upfront and honest with the American people. The wizards in these internment camps are treated very, very well. Many of you would be jealous of how well these wizards are treated in their internment camps. There are absolutely no abuses of any kind ever to any of these wizards. You are aware of the pictures that got released, correct? Which, uh, oh, uh, I believe um, those were uh, the result of photomancy, and I stand with the White House's opinion on the matter. Interesting. Okay, now we're going to go with questions from the audience. Uh, yes, you, sir, there, your first hand. My name is Dobby, and I am a free elf. And my question is for Grandmaster Sparkle. For the wizards that have been captured, is there any way to free them? Maybe by, like, a sock? Um, unfortunately, at this time, we do not have an appeals process for any wizards who have been interned. We are working uh, closely with a number of government agencies to see if we can find some means of removing the wizard's powers by means other than wizardry so as to avoid internal hypocrisy. Uh, thank you. Also, can we get all house elves out of here, please? I was told this would be a human-only event. Thank you, security. Uh, yes, you, sir. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I need to ask this, uh, Mr. U.S. guy. Here, uh, uh, General Rockenheimer. Yeah, Mr. Rockenheimer. Uh, Heimer. Oh, yes, that. Um, are you? Uh, you mentioned uh, these like rocket launching unicorns. So, are you afraid that Al Qaeda is going to get a hold of one of these rocket launching unicorns and use it against our own people? I mean, that's a very serious. You see, threat. we've actually looked into the magical presence in the Middle East. It turns out they do not use wizards there. They use shamans. Shamans are not known for their ability to transmogrifate things into animals. They are more of the summoning nature. They would be the demon summoners we are talking about earlier. Hmm. So, no, I am not worried about them getting a hands on our transmogrification spells. That is strictly American, European, in allied nations. Uh, Grandmaster Sparkles, um, was this one of your main reasons for starting the internment camps? Well, we wanted to start with wizards because, as Mr. Rockenheimer has stated, uh, mm. that is the main trouble in America today is with wizards. I do hope, I am forging initiative to expand the program to also include shamans and gypsies and uh, witch doctors and the like as well. Um, However, at this time, we are strictly enforcing this on wizards, but uh, any uh, shamans or the like, um, head for the borders. Ah, uh, you there. Yes, sir. As we all know, the, uh, the original wizard corps was started because of the Pratagon invasion from the Pratagon dimension. Of course, when correct. The, when the wizards who are now, as I understand, the president has issued a recall order. Yes. Um, when mm -hmm. the... Wizards come back from the Pratagon dimension, will they be immediately interned, or will their efforts in war be considered before internment? This is an interesting question. Will veterans uh, be interned when they come back? Well, as you also may be aware, uh, most of the wizards, many of the wizards who did fight in the Pratagon invasion, uh, did, we did suffer severe wizard casualties at the time. As of right now, uh, the only wizards, well, we only have a very small number of veteran wizards in the internment system. That is largely due to the fact that the supremacy of the wizards who participated in the fights have uh, not been located yet due to their supreme <coughs> wizardry. And that is a fault that... I just want my baby to come home. Um, if I may, we yes. in the military have been informed of some of these policies. It turns out that a lot of the not most, but a few of the uh, wizards that were during the in are still in the Paragon Dimension. Pratagon, I have trouble with words sometimes. The Pratagon Dimension have actually reached a level of Archmage, and the internment process does not take Archmages. 
the thing is, we were informed that when they reach that level, their service in war has made them national heroes, if you will, and they will not be taken. That, that is one interpretation of the law as it is written, but it is my personal stance and interpretation that the reason we uh, do not attempt to intern archmages is because I do not believe we should be applying laws we cannot enforce. Archmages at this time uh, simply cannot be contained. And so Are some eight archmages too big to fail? Interesting question. That is um, not the way I would put it. I would simply say it as uh, we are trying to be realistic in our goals here as a government agency. One last question. You there. Yes. Um, I was wondering, uh, as many of my second grade students know, I'm a big fan of the Holocaust and of World War II. And I was just wondering, you said that there may not be like euthanasia. I really want there to be euthanasia. I'm a big fan of euthanasia. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if, if that is not going to be the result, then is there like a petition or something we can start so we can euthanize the lizard? Killing off uh, interred wizards. Uh, we will start off with uh, Rockenheimer. It's people like you, good sir, that make me sick. I will fight with the wizards and human brothers alike to fight for your right to say bigoted things like that, but I do not support your claims. You want to euthanize wizards? Yes. Then I hope you're familiar with the old wizard saying that if you kill them, they will be stronger. Hmm. That is also my opinion on the subject. I do not personally think euthanasia of the wizards is a good idea because, as you said, if you kill them, they will be stronger, and that is simply not the uh, goal that we set out with in mind. Excellent. Okay, um, we are now moving into closing statements. Um, uh, since you opened, we will have a Rock and Heimer close, so if you want to start. Wizards are a danger and a threat to society and the world at large. Our technology has progressed largely in a way that benefits mankind more and more, whereas wizarding, wizardry in general, has not progressed for several thousand years. Any, any productive applications of wizardry have since been made obsolete by modern conveniences that we have today. And I just want to make it clear for anybody out there accusing me of being a wizard, I am not at all a wizard, nor am I at all trying to intern all wizards for the sole purpose of becoming the supreme wizard on planet Earth. Thank you. Thank you, General Rockenheimer. <clears throat> People of America, we have faced many interdimensional threats before, and I don't believe I need to tell you since the Zergazen threat of 1992 that conventional weapons do not carry over across dimensions in any productive form. Sending over our unmagically trained soldiers is merely asking for casualties that are unnecessary. We have not found a better dimensional defense than the wizards. So, if you will not listen to me for the humanitarian reasons that I have spoke of previously, then I do at least ask you will keep the wizards safe and deep in your hearts and in our army for the sake of our home defense. Thank you, both of you. These are dark times we are living in. Um, let us hope that the Savior will soon come and save us from Armageddon. Uh, this has been Logical Fallacies. I uh, am your moderator, and we will see you next time. And so concludes our discussion for the evening. We hope that all of you enjoyed yourselves and perhaps even learned something tonight. I certainly know I did. From all of us here at Logical Fallacies, I'm Evan Plager. Thank you and good night.
Logical Fallacies is a production of Penny Farthing Entertainment. If you have questions or comments about the topic or for tonight's participants, please let us know in the comment section for this video, and they might be addressed in our viewer response segment. Be sure to like, favorite, and share this video, as well as subscribe to Logical Fallacies. Programs by Penny Farthing Entertainment are made possible by viewers like you.